artificial intelligence is hugely useful in the healthcare sector where doctors can use real time information to improve outcomes even while they are treating a patient. I am here with Dr. Vidur Mahajan who is going to talk about caring which is a part of Mahajan Imaging. So what is caring all about? Uh, so caring uh, is an acronym. Uh, First of all, it stands for the Center for Advanced Research in Imaging, Neurosciences and Genomics. Uh, it's the R&D division of Mahajan Imaging in the sense that we work with uh, close to 25 collaborators from across the world, helping uh, these research groups develop, test and deploy any kind of advanced analytics uh, tool uh, as it pertains to the field of diagnostics. Uh, if you think about it, right, there has been this uh, revolution uh, in computation power, right? Our cell phones today are at least a million times more powerful than the computers that sent the Apollo 11 up to the moon. And what this has done has given us enough ability to replicate our cognitive processes. And one of the key cognitive processes is the doctor's thought process. And within diagnostics, what we can now do is say read CT scans automatically read chest x-rays automatically and as a function of that what happens is that um, in areas where there are no doctors or where there are less doctors patients can start getting served by algorithms instead of doctors. Is it happening in India already? Can so, you give me uh, an example of how so, it's done? So for example tuberculosis screening, uh, so x-ray has been used for screening for tuberculosis patients uh, for a while now and now uh, there are pilot projects coming up across the country where uh, organizations both government non-government organizations and also private entities are looking at conducting massive screening camps uh, with AI at the back end uh, essentially using algorithms to triage cases. So, uh, so as we all know an x-ray is a photograph of the lungs. Uh, which is a black and white photograph where we look through the lungs and typically what happens is a doctor looks at those images and then interprets them and tells you whether you have any kind of lung disease or not and tuberculosis is a kind of lung disease. Uh, now with AI at the back end, uh, there are screening camps, there are vans essentially which are fitted with x-ray machines that are going from place to place and getting in population, so getting in high risk population doing their x-ray scans and then while they are in the van uh, an AI algorithm tells uh, the technician whether this particular patient is possibly has tuberculosis or not. So you don't need a radiologist sitting there in exactly. the van, right? Yes. So then how accurate are these readings? Recently a paper was published uh, as of last month uh, by the Stop TB initiative uh, where they compared uh, three AI algorithms from across the world and the accuracy was higher than 95 percent. They compared against three different doctors and all three algorithms were better than so Do you think radiologists are getting redundant now? Machines not, not can do all, the job? Not at all. See, these are very... So, how can they value yeah. add to the screening that happens? Correct. That the doctor verifies it. Okay. Right? So, if you look at the field of pathology and lab medicine, mm -hmm. right, everybody gets blood tests done mm -hmm. nowadays and 20 years ago, all of these blood tests were highly manual procedures. Yeah, yeah. Each and blood test was different. Now exactly. you have panels. Which now is you easier. have panels, you put in blood and you get out a series of numbers. And one pathologist can effectively validate a thousand or even ten thousand cases using mm -hmm. technology. So the same thing will happen with radiology, where uh, we are so grossly underserved mm -hmm. globally by radiologists that one radiologist will start reporting 500, 600, 800 scans in the future as opposed to the 50, 60 that they so do as we have seen with path tests, it is actually you know these panels that are available for yes. testing, it is what the price is down. Yes. So do you see that happening in radiology Absolutely, as well? Yes. So will I pay less for my next, I mean for my MRI 5 years from now if it, you have? It is highly possible that you will pay less or you even if you pay the same amount, the value that you will derive from that scan mm -hmm. will be so much higher, right? And we are already seeing it happen. If you see the, there is hardly any difference in the price of an MRI scan today and 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the value that you derive from an MRI scan today, purely uh, like in terms of quality, is much, much higher uh, than what you would derive 20 years ago. All of this is about bringing down price. It is about it improving accessible. outcomes. Uh, you know, it is about appropriateness. Uh, one of the things uh, we are doing at our centers is a AI based quality audit 
where every scan, every x-ray is read by both radiologist and AI and whenever there is a disconnect, uh, a senior radiologist looks at that scan and tries to see whether there was a mistake that may have occurred inadvertently. So, do you find so more machine error or do you find more? Right now, we find more machine error. Ah, okay. <laughs> So, you are just back from the world's biggest radiology conference. Yes. What is the role of India in yeah. uh, when it comes to artificial intelligence and medicine? Because you know these are really our two strengths, yes. we are very good at medicine, we are good at technology. Yes. So, do you see India playing a big role? So, uh, absolutely. Is I, it happening so already? Yeah, the, the conference is called RSNA, the Radiology Society of North America and uh, over there we presented 18 papers. Uh, and there were many others also who presented from India who presented uh, a high number of papers all related to deep learning, AI, machine learning and, and these uh, advanced uh, analytical fields. And it is testament to the fact that India is a very uh, fertile place for testing these algorithms. Why is that? Uh, because uh, number one, nobody gets hurt while you are testing these algorithms, right? Trial there is no such. human trial uh, which is a huge advantage of uh, testing out these algorithms, most of it happens retrospectively. Uh, the second is that uh, for good or for bad, uh, India just by virtue of our population, we have diseases of the West uh, and we have you know diseases of Africa. So we uh, as a country carry the entire spectrum So and also we have the world's best engineers, right. Um, and the way AI is coming up in a very democratized way. What that means is that any person out there, most of your viewers can literally open up a laptop uh, and after 15 minutes of YouTubing can start doing AI themselves. So a lot of these things, availability of data, availability of skills, availability of internet has led to this AI boom in India right now. Exactly. So how can smaller organizations like yours, what yes. is the advantage you have over them? So. Uh, I think number one, there is no competition, uh, you know, these big companies have realized that they, in fact, all three G, Siemens, Philips have their own platforms where they are encouraging startups and smaller companies to come and plug into their systems uh, to provide small, small tools, right. And the biggest advantage that a small company has over a big company is speed, uh, right. Uh, you can be working on one thing today, realize it's wrong and then start working on an entire separate thing in a matter of a week. It's also easier for smaller companies to source data, to do a lot of the medical testing uh, and to go deep into one thing uh, very, very yeah, quickly. Is one of the learnings uh, from RSNA this year, Sanchita, for us was that, uh, and this is a software suite that we've developed, is that there might be a layer of uh, analytics in every hospital uh, going forward. So this is like, you know, typically in a hospital, you have a hospital information system, which is a software on which the entire hospital runs. We see that there will be a second layer uh, of an analytics uh, platform where every hospital will get access to the entire world's, you know, you can call it AI. We, we say, you know, there is BI and CI. BI is business intelligence, CI is clinical intelligence. So every hospital will need access to the thousands of tools that are out there. So do you, do you see more of this happening with Ayushman Bharat? Absolutely, yes. They are running startup challenges of their own. They are encouraging uh, startups to come and meet them. Uh, so, uh, through industry bodies, I know CII, FICI, Nat Health, all of these uh, are pushing startups in the direction of Ayushman Bharat. Uh, so, because everyone acknowledges that it has to be a technology play. Uh, it will not be possible to literally build up 150,000 wellness centers and then have them operating in silos, right? They will have to be connected, there will have to be a mobile element. Uh, to all of it because uh, with India with I think 300 million smartphones is one of the biggest smartphone markets in the world. So all of these users will need Ayushman Bharat mm -hmm. on one side and will need you know all the other healthcare apps on the other. We have the some of the, I say this with a lot of humility but some of the smartest doctors on the planet, some of the smartest engineers on the planet and we have the most data on the planet. So if India is not going to take a lead in testing out uh, AI across the world, uh, from across the world, uh, then it will be a huge lost opportunity. Yes. Thank you so much. This was really no. useful. Thank, Thank you. you.